Up to this point, we discussed two different methods by which we can synthesize our amino acids. So we examined the alkylation of alpha haloacids and we also discussed the Gabriel synthesis, also known as the Gabriel malonic ester synthesis. So these are our two ways in which we can synthesize amino acids. Now, yet another reaction that basically allows us to synthesize amino acids is this reaction here known as the Strecker synthesis and this is what we're going to discuss in this lecture. First, let's take a look at the general outline of this reaction and, let's, and then let's look at our details. As we can see, the reaction mechanism is quite lengthy. So let's begin with the first main step. Basically, we take some type of aldehyde as shown that contains some type of R group and we mix it with our ammonia in the presence of potassium cyanide. We produce the following molecule. We basically add an H atom to the oxygen and we also add our amine group onto our carbon. In the next step, we add hydrochloric acid or some other type of acid to basically produce our imine. In the next step, we add potassium cyanide or we use the potassium cyanide that we began with and we transform the amine to the following molecule here. And in the final series of steps, we basically add hydronium in the presence of water. So we have the acid hydrolysis of this into this final product, which is basically our uh, primary amino acid. So this is the alpha primary amino acid. We have our amine group on the alpha position. We have the hydrocarbon R group or some other type of side chain. This basically depends on the side chain that we begin with and we have the carboxylic acid group. So these are the general steps but let's actually take a look at the specific steps and we have 15 such steps. So let's begin with step number one. So we take our aldehyde. So we're going to keep the R group as the R group. We could use any group we want. So basically our first step is the <coughs> excuse me, this ammonium basically acts as our nucleophile attacking the carbon of the carbonyl group nucleophilically, displacing the pi bond and placing those electrons from the pi bond onto this oxygen. So now we have a negative charge on the oxygen and a positive charge on this nitrogen. We have the ammonium group. In the next step, some type of base, let's suppose our ammonium deprotonates this nitrogen forming the following molecule here and the ammonium that is formed basically protonates the oxygen to form this molecule which is this intermediate right here so we have a deprotonation and a protonation step take place in step two and step three. In step one, we have the nucleophilic addition of the ammonia to our carbon, moly, uh, our carbon atom. Now, in the next step, we basically want to add the hydrochloric acid. Why? Well, we basically want to form this imine. And the imine basically lacks the hydroxyl group. So we want to transform the poor leaving group, the hydroxide, to a much better leaving group, our water molecule. And so we add the hydrochloric acid. The H is protonated onto our oxygen, forming the good leaving group, our water. And then in the next step, in step five, we have the closing, the formation of this pi bond between the nitrogen and the carbon, and we displace this bond, kicking off our water molecule, forming this protonated version of this amine. Now, this can either go on to form the amine, or right from this molecule, the protonated version of the amine, our cyanide can react with this molecule. So cyanide is a very good Lewis base. This protonated amine is a very good Lewis acid. 
So we have this acting as a nuclear file, attacking this carbon at the same time we displace the pi bond, place the two electrons onto this carbon. And the entire purpose of that is to basically remove the negative charge or the positive charge on our nitrogen. And we form this tetrahedral intermediate here where we have the carbon which is this carbon here contains the H it contains the R now it contains the cyanide group and it also contains this amine group on the bottom now the next step is basically this acid hydrolysis so all these steps that we just did steps one through step six basically involves these steps here and the rest is basically our acid hydrolysis so now we mix our hydronium in water so the hydronium basically protonates this nitrogen on this cyanide group and we form this protonated version now the carbon and nitrogen contains a triple bond and once the hydronium protonates this nitrogen we form water and the water will now act as a nucleophile attacking this carbon nucleophilically displacing our pi bond one of the pi bonds and placing the two electrons onto this nitrogen why well because we want to remove our positive charge on the nitrogen and we form this intermediate that now contains a positive charge on that oxygen so in step nine a water molecule in close proximity basically deprotonates this oxygen and we form this intermediate that contains a double bond between the carbon and nitrogen and no more positive charges now in the next step we basically want to go from this molecule to our acids to our amino acid so we somehow want to basically remove this group and replace it with a carbon oxygen double bond so the way we're going to do it is in the following manner we take the hydronium the hydronium protonates this nitrogen and that basically places a positive charge on this nitrogen in the next step we have the formation of the double bond between the oxygen and carbon and and so we form this molecule here but at the same time as the pi bond is being formed a water molecule that was formed in this step when this was deprotonated now takes away this H atom and so that allows this bond to form a pi bond at the same time this kicks off this pi bond and placing uh, places those two electrons from the pi bond onto our nitrogen removing that positive charge and now we form this molecule that contains that carbon oxygen double bond so basically this reaction in a way is an intramolecular elimination where we eliminate our pi bond now let's look at what happens next so once this water is protonated we form our hydronium and the hydronium once again protonates this same nitrogen remember we want to remove this nitrogen group and replace it with a, uh, an OH group so that means we want to keep on protonating this same nitrogen and so if we have hydronium this will act as a good base it will take this H atom and so we protonate it and we form our ammonium ion which is a good leaving group and the next step the water molecule formed in this step acts as the nucleophile attacking the carbon of the carbonyl group nucleophilically placing breaking the pi bond placing those two electrons onto our oxygen forming this intermediate and once again we have an elimination step taking place in step 14.
So once we form this ammonia and the water, the ammonium is a better leaving group. And so we form the pi bond that kicks off this ammonium and we form an intermediate that I have not shown. In the last step, in step 15, we basically deprotonate uh, our oxygen and we form this carboxylic acid group. So we basically form the final amino acid, this amino acid here. So we have the carboxylic acid group, we have our primary amine attached to this alpha carbon and we have some sort of R group. Now this R group basically depends on what type of R group is <clears throat> is found on this initial aldehyde molecule. So this reaction is known as the Strecker synthesis. And just like the alkylation of alpha halo acids and the Gabriel synthesis, the Strecker synthesis is also a good way to basically form our amino acid molecules.